Here's our first example of how to deal with the shear stress and the shear strain. So here again we have this block of material. We anchor it at the bottom so that it can move to the right and then we push on the top edge of the block and we expect a certain amount of deformation delta x as a function of how high this material is and of course the shear module of the material, how strong the material is against deformation. So now the question is if we apply a force of a thousand newtons which is roughly 200 pounds and we have a block of iron so we're going to yeah, let's, let's uh, use iron and here we have the shear modulus of iron which is 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 10 pascals pascals of course is newtons per square meter and let's say that the height of the block is 5 centimeters the length of the block is 20 centimeters the width of the block is 2 centimeters how much will we deform the block by pushing on it like that with a force of 200, oh, no, 200 pounds roughly or 1000 newtons all right so again the uh, the formula goes as follows let me write over here the shear stress and of course you don't have to keep writing shear all the time it just exemplifies it it makes it easier to follow shear stress divided by the shear strain is equal to now of course stress units always are or the formula always is force over area and shear stress would be or shear strain would be delta x divided by the height the ratio of how much it deforms divided by the height given there all right, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So this can be written as F divided by A times, and again, dividing by a fraction, same as multiplying by its inverse, so times H over delta X. And of course, the ratio of the shear stress of the shear strain is equal to the uh, shear modulus S. Now, S was given, force is given, the error can be uh, inferred from knowing the length and the width, and H is given, so let's say we need to find delta x, the amount of deformation. So we're going to take this portion of the equation and solve it for delta x, meaning we're going to move delta x over here and the s down here and turn the equation around. So we get delta x is equal to, we have f times h over the cross-section area and then the s comes down here. And so we have solved this equation for delta x. Now let's plug in the numbers, see what we get. Now noticing that since that's steel, it's a big block of steel, I don't expect delta x to be a very big number. So here we have a thousand newtons. The height was uh, five centimeters, converted that to meters, 0 0.05 meters, because 100 centimeters to a meter. Cross-sectional area, we have width times length, that will give us the cross-sectional area of the material. So that would be the width is uh, two centimeters, 0 0.02 meters, multiplied times the length, which is 0 0.20 meters. So that would be the width times the length for the cross-section area. And the shear modulus for iron is given to us as 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 10th newtons per square meter. All right, when all is said and done, we should have a ratio of, let's see here, meters, because newtons cancel out with newtons, and these meters cancel out with meters squared, so we're just simply left with meters in the numerator. So let's find out what the number is expected to be small, 1,000 times 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.2 and divided by 7.7e .7 to the 10th equals, and sure enough, 1.62 times 10 to the minus 7, that's a very tiny number. So 1.67 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Why, that would be less than a micrometer. That's, uh, wow, very small. I'm going to do this again just to make sure. One Equals, thousand. sure enough, that's a really tiny amount. So, less than a micrometer. I would say that block, the deformation, even though it's really there, I don't think you can measure it or even see it. So you get this block of metal, push on the top, you get a very small amount of deformation. Regardless of the results, I think the illustration is pretty clear. Again, we have shear stress divided by shear strain, which is F over area. Now, in this case, it's not the cross-sectional area of a, of a cable, but it's simply the top of the material that gets deformed in that direction. Height is the thickness of the material this way. Um, the force applied is the force applied at the very edge of the top there. And then, of course, the shear modulus is the modulus related to the material, and that's how you find the deformation of a material. So that's a pretty good straightforward example to understand the shear stress and strain uh, a little bit better. And then I have a few more examples where we're simply going to cut a piece of material off. And again, the result is that we have to understand the shear stress in that case. That will be on the next video.